When it comes to fabrics or textiles, there is just so much to learn that it can really be overwhelming. So I have put together this video to explain it to you in the most basic, simplest way. If you're interested in learning about textiles and how they're made, just keep on watching. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and let me know all your questions and comments. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. Hello my beautiful and magical beings, thank you for being back on another episode here on my Karmatika Designs channel. Today we will be talking about all about fabrics. I have always been fascinated about the whole process of how textiles are made. Creating textiles is truly an art and in today's video I will explain just that. So when it comes to making fabric, the most basic thing to know is that there are natural fabrics which derive from an animal or a plant source or synthetic fabrics which come pretty much from a factory, they are 100% man-made. The one thing they, they have in common is that they are both made out of fiber. But with natural fabrics, you pretty much have a shorter fiber. And the same happens with synthetic fabrics, where they also use a fiber, but they are called filaments, which means they are longer. So finally, they both get spun into a yarn and then woven into a fabric. In essence, when we talk about woven fabrics, we are pretty much talking about of how the spun yarn has been woven. On a plain weave fabric, basically you have your warp, which are the yarns that are going straight or vertical, and then you have your weave, the ones that go across, if that makes any sense. But you can kind of see the perpendicular weaves that it has across that would be considered a plain weave. It is one of the most common types of weaves when, when it comes to a woven fabric. So for woven fabrics, we also have what would be considered a twill weave. And these, instead of going perpendicular, these are going diagonal. Think about your jeans. I'll show you a little piece of what I'm talking about here. You get the point diagonal lines. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the salvage. Every fabric, when you go out to the store and you buy fabric, you will notice that it has this piece of white, almost uh, useless section. So basically this part of the fabric will tell you about grain lines. When we talk about grain lines, we are talking about that you have your warp, your weave, the horizontal and when you go diagonal that would be your bias this will give you the least stretch the warp this will give you some stretch but then the bias will give you the most stretch and this is why you hear the term of a bias cut dress basically because it has that softness even though it's so woven so the garment will be more flowy will be um, will fit the body more comfortably almost like a knit fabric so whenever you cut it you want to keep in mind those grain lines to get a better fit and more accurate construction and less problems when sewing and fitting following that knits knits are wonderful we all love knits we all wear them every day and just like the wovens they have sort of instead of like the warp and the weave they have what it's called the whales and corsets if you're a crocheter or a knitter you would know what i'm talking about and the reason why we love knits so much is because of the comfort and the stretch you know all your um, active wear clothing you know they they all they all have a really nice stretch and the other thing about it is that you don't have to really worry much about grain lines because it's stretchy all the way 360 degrees <laughs> around so those are the two differences between woven and knit fabric some of the different types of natural fabric would be fabrics like cotton linen hemp silk wool cashmere leather bamboo and many other ones that maybe i'm not mentioning right now there are tons of fabric it seems that they keep coming up with newer fabrics and just modernizing and revolutionizing this whole 
textile industry. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons that come with working with natural textiles. Basically, some of the pros would be they're breathable, they're comfortable, they're dyeable, and they're biodegradable. So that is very, very important if you are leaning towards something with more comfort in general. Now let's talk about the cons. So some of the cons would include environmental issues, such as things like using massive amount of water. Another thing would be like the land that gets used. That's not including all the pesticides and chemicals sometimes get that gets sprayed into to staple fibers like cotton or linen or hemp, you know, all these um, different plants that sometimes get sprayed with pesticides to avoid pests. And also animal cruelty that sometimes goes into this. I mean, I would love to think that the leather that goes into the tanneries are from animals that were killed for their meat. Even though I believe that people should just stop eating meat to stop contributing to global warming and other environmental issues, but I will not get into that. But in general, the animal cruelty that sometimes goes into um, creating these textiles, um, it's just really sad. I don't think that any animal should be harmed just for their skin or for their fur. It seems like a fair deal. The other thing that's kind of a downer with natural fabrics is that it costs a lot more to produce them um, compared to synthetic fibers. So I think those are my only cons. If you can think of any more, please let me know down in the comments. Moving on to synthetic fibers or fabrics. So some of the fabrics that are made out of synthetic material are um, fabrics like polyester, rayon, acrylic, nylon, lyocell, acetate, and spandex. Now what are the pros of wearing synthetic fabrics? Well, the pros are that they are cheaper. You can find a really good variety in the market with colors, patterns, sometimes like embroidery, things like that. They are adsorbent, which means they repel water. Think of like fabrics like vinyl. These are great for keeping us dry. And they are also durable. Um, that's what they are very known for. Some of the cons that come with that is that they can be sometimes quite uncomfortable because basically they make you hot and sweaty. Not a very pleasant thing to have. Uh, the other thing is that sometimes, it's depending on the fabrics, but sometimes it can cause a lot of static. I mean, who likes to be walking around with a staticky skirt? I don't know if you've ever been in that position, but I have, and I don't wish it upon anybody. <laughs> um, the other thing is that Synthetic fabrics are non-biodegradable, which means that synthetic fabrics are essentially plastic, um, so they will not disintegrate into the earth without causing a major harm. Not to mention, they're also not the most eco-friendly thing because of the process that goes into it. Um, sometimes they use a lot of chemical, electricity, machinery. There's just a lot that goes into that. Um, not the most sustainable or eco-friendly option. And last but not least that I can think of is that synthetic fibers are hard to dye. I wouldn't say that they are non dyeable unless they are blend, but usually you cannot get dye to stay in something made out of plastic, if that makes any sense. And just keep in mind that, that as with anything in this life, there is good and bad and sometimes the ugly to um, every situation. But in this case, I think they both have a pretty good share of good and bad. Um, it's just really a matter of figuring out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. The nice thing is that many times if you read your labels on your clothing, they will specify what kinds of fibers are in there. If it's uh, cotton spandex, you know, if you're talking about a t-shirt or something like that, you know, you can expect the properties of the cotton, which are absorbent, uh, breathable, comfortable. Um, but also you get the stretchiness from the spandex. So um, pay a little more attention to your labels and see what works for you, what doesn't. 
So yeah, that would be my small theory lesson on textiles. And I hope I've made it simple and not super complicated. And I also hope that your brain is not about to explode right now with all this information. Um, if you do have any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, doubts, anything that you might want to add to anything that I've said, please feel free to reach out in the comments, send me DMs. Like all my contact information is at the very end of this video. So stick around to see that if you want to get in touch with me. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, thank you all so much. I really hope that you have learned something in, in the most simplest way and that you become more of a label reader next time that you're trying to buy that cheap dress. Chances are that it is made probably out of a synthetic fabric and also pay a little more attention to where it was made if it was made in um, in a third world country, unfortunately, we're probably talking about an ethical issue there as well. Um, but that will be a whole topic for another video that I am currently preparing for you guys. So yeah, um, this will be it for this video. And as a reminder, if you are watching this video and we are not connected on Instagram, I invite you dearly to do so because I will be holding a giveaway to celebrate you. Also, if you have haven't done so yet please go ahead and hit that subscribe button it costs you nothing to be supportive of a channel who wants to make a real difference in the world so thank you so much I love and send blessings your way and I will see you in the next video thank you